Hi guys, in today's video we're going to show you how to get circuit pattern on the Wii terminal. We'll also be testing um, it out with some circuit pattern code and we'll show you um, where and how to get that code. I heard that there's a speaker in here, so we're going to use some circuit pattern code that I wrote a while ago um, when my sister challenged me to um, play our theme tune using a Raspberry Pi Pico. And I'm just going to put that code onto the device and see if it works straight off. Don't forget to check out our other videos on the Wii Terminal. One where we show you how to put MicroPython on it. Another where we show you how to get the Arduino software and how to connect it to the Wii Terminal. And then also the review on the Wii Terminal. And hopefully those should all be uploaded, ready to watch by the time you're watching this video. Now, before we begin, I do want to say we're going to be doing this on a Raspberry Pi, but you obviously don't have to use a Raspberry Pi, you could use any other Linux distribution or Windows or Mac. But if you haven't got the same setup of us, the process will be similar, but you may have to tweak a few things here and there. The reason why we're using a Raspberry Pi is because they're cheap and accessible. For example, you could get a Raspberry Pi Zero for just over £10. And if you did want to set that up headless, um, you would need no monitor or mouse or keyboard for it. Before we begin this video, I do want to say we've not been paid by the companies to do these types of videos, but companies do often send us products for free for us to play around with. So we were sent this for free. Now let's plug it into a computer and get it into bootloader mode. And you can see it's off right now. And if I put the switch to the middle, you can see that's on. And if I flick the switch over to the other side and back twice, really fastly, that'll put it in bootloader mode. So watch my computer screen as I do it. You can see, and this pops up. So this might not pop up if you're not on a Raspberry Pi. If you're not on a Raspberry Pi, it's just as easy. For example, I've just nipped up to the Mac now. I've plugged it in, and I'm gonna put it into bootloader mode. So I'm gonna do the double switch thing. Again. Yeah, again. Oh. Go. And you can see it's popped up as an external, um, what do you call it, a mass storage device here. And also in Finder, it's come up here. And here you can just um, drag on your UF2 file here. The next step is to get the um, circuit path for UF2 firmware and put it onto the Wii terminal. So on the right here, I've opened up my Wii terminal that's been mounted onto my computer as a mass storage device. And on the left, I've just gone to circuitpython.org. Then I'm going to click Downloads here. And then I'm just going to search for my um, Wii terminal. So I'm going to type Wii. Uh, it's already popped up, so I'm going to click on that. And simply press this button here, download.uf2 now. You can see it's handy come up in Chromium here at the bottom. It might do that for you or you might have to go find it on your computer. It will most likely be in downloads. And then because it's come up here, all I'm going to do is drag that onto my, uh, my storage device or my Wii terminal. You could copy and paste it over. So you can see my file window is gone now. It might not disappear for you, but it's disappeared for me. And... Um, this has popped up, I just press OK, and you can see here it's labelled itself Circuit Pi, and it's got the Circuit Pi for UF2 firmware on. And if you look here, I've not done any coding or anything, If you, but if you look here, um, I've got my cool Circuit Pi from Snake, and um, it's just printed this, displayed this out for me. So that is actually quite cool. Now for the fun part, testing whether the Circuit Pi actually works. As I said earlier, I'm going to use some circuit pattern code that I wrote a while back um, playing our theme tune in circuit pattern, obviously. And if you do want to get this code, just head over to github.com forward slash gurgle apps and find music code, which is here. Click on it. And then you can see I've got um, two, one for circuit pattern, one for micro pattern. But we want the circuit pattern one, so I'm going to click that. And then I should really um, git clone this or save this file onto my device. But it's not a lot of code, so I'm just going to select it all and copy it and then paste the code. Now, you can open any um, code or text editor of choice. Now, just to prove that, I'm, I'm going to actually open text editor. And I'm just going to paste it in. 
And now to put this code onto your device, you have to save it. So I'm gonna file, save as. And then I need to go to my CircuitPy um, device. And because it's CircuitPython, if you save it as code.py, then I'll run this code immediately. So I'll save it as that. And then I'm just gonna reset my um, device, as I showed you earlier by flicking the switch over to one side and back. Now actually, if I grab the camera, it's done something really cool here. It's displayed a problem on the screen. So it says a uh, model uh, object has no attribute GP2, which is what I feared would come up because I actually don't know what pin the buzzer or speaker is inside the board. So to fix this, um, I'm actually gonna open a um, code editor. I've chosen Thonny. I've chosen Thonny because um, you've got this little bit down here we can actually access the device and um, play around with it. To connect to your device via Fonny, you just go run, then select interpreter, and then click this drop down menu, and then choose circuit Python generic. So if I just import a board, and then I'm gonna go board, oops, dot, then tab, this shows me all the um, things I can use board with inside this device. Oops, I, there go, tab. And I'm just gonna look down and I found buzzer. So that buzzer implies to me that that's probably what they've called it in here. So in my code, I'm gonna go board.buzzer, all capitals. And then I'm gonna file, save, reset my device. It worked. Just in case you didn't hear that, I'm gonna play it close to the camera. So the microphone is here. Not the microphone, the um, buzzer. So reset it. Fab, I'm really impressed with that. I wanted this video to be under 10 minutes, so we're just gonna wrap it up here. Now, before the Raspberry Pi Picos came out, we would used to code on a microcontroller in mainly Arduino. Well, not mainly, actually always Arduino. Then after the Raspberry Pi Pico came out, we started coding in MicroPython and CircuitPython, and we mainly used MicroPython. And then we also used C occasionally. But on the weird terminal, if I had to order which um, programming languages I would use, it'd probably be CircuitPython at the top, then Arduino. I would very rarely, if not never, use MicroPython at the moment. Because if you have seen our um, getting MicroPython onto the Weird Terminal video, then you'll know that it was an absolute pain to get stuff working. For example, the code we used today, we used the MicroPython version and we could not change the frequencies at all. The code we put on the Weird Terminal and CircuitPython today was picked at random, shows that most programs will most probably work in CircuitPython on the Weird Terminal. Anyway, I've had a lot of fun making this video. If you did like the video, please give it a big thumbs up um, and check out our website, googleapps.com. We have an article on this video and all our other videos. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already. Have a good day. Bye.